Minchie. Oh. You know he's not fretting our box. Oh. Point for even. Brighton morning. fans really going into it were saying it was a must win the only person who I saw say to a Rovers who wasn't saying it was a must win was the new manager John Eustace um, he did not see today as a must win and it was a game we did not win so I suppose in his eyes um, a point was a good result um, apologies for the, the lack of content on this vlog um, especially in the second half we had next to nothing of note to really record it was all just Plymouth um so yeah um I don't know where to start really um I really I I, I would consider it a disappointing result but due to the circumstances of the game you would take a point uh to come away with a point after being, you know, ten men down, um, uh, one man down rather for, you know, 35, 40, 40 minutes, including the injury time, forty minutes, um, and we were well under the cosh. We, we were resolute. Um, you know, you could feel the goal coming, but we did well not to capitulate after conceding and uh, hold on for the draw. Um, in my opinion, I think Scott Watson did single-handedly cost us that goal. Unfortunately, I think um, I just think he's a liability. To be honest, um, you know, don't get me wrong; he's had some decent games as of late uh, under Eustace, um, but he is accountable for that goal, um, and no one can tell me otherwise. Unfortunately, and he had a he had an absolute shocker today. Um, I would love for us to go to a back four next game and try Kuometeo next to uh, Hyam. Obviously, we're not going to see McFasden now for at least three games. Um, but I, I, I think it's just clear after today that the back five is not working and I'm not sure why we're playing a back five at home against Millwall and Plymouth, teams who 
we should have been taking the game to at home. We should have, you know, been been gone for the three points and seeing it as a much more important three points for us to pick up than for them who Millwall were more than happy with a draw. Um, I think Plymouth did obviously push for the win, obviously being against 10 men, you would assume that they would. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we really should have been going uh, four at the back, three in midfield, in my opinion. Um, but we're, we're obviously accommodating for McFasdian, um, and we accommodated for him today, and it, it didn't do us much good at all, to be honest. Um, Plymouth were cutting us open time and time again. Um, fair play to, to Walt's head in between the sticks, who made a couple of really big saves, one in particular where I think it was a 3v2, um, and, you know, a really good pass. The, the players one-on-one, -on -one and... Um, he comes out, puts his body in harm's way, had a bit of a dead leg, uh, but carried on and uh, really saved us there. Um, but yeah, even before the 10 men we were getting cut wide open, Plymouth had an abundance of chances. You know, the the, the Arnis Sigurdsson miss was the only other chance we had other than the goal. Um, and yeah, it's an absolute fumble from Sigurdsson. He has to be burying that. Uh, makes it 2-0 the game could have been completely different but you know with the way we're playing unfortunately this summer it just seems the only person who's competent at putting the ball in the back of the net is Smodix. Um I can't remember the last time someone else actually scored uh, what's quite scary to think um, but yeah I mean uh, Sigurdsson misses and then Plymouth, it almost just walked Plymouth up. They had chance after chance in the first half. We somehow went in at half time, 1 0 up. And then, um, you know, second half come out and they're doing the same again. Balls over the top in behind of McFazdian, and Hyam and Sporton. None of them blessed with pace, but in particular McFazdian. And, uh, you know, he has, a, he has the option of bringing the man down which he did and obviously got the red and it was quite blatant, it, it, quite an obvious red card in my opinion. Um, or oh, he lets him run through on goal um, and, you know, in that situation, I think he, I think he would have buried it, the player. Um, so, being the veteran he is, he was always going to take him down in that in that situation. He was never going to let him run through on goal. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, after that, not really anything of note for us. But, uh, yeah, obviously Scott, with the mistake, really poor touch. It just puts the ball on a plate for a Plymouth player to start a counter-attack. And before you know it, uh, where it's 1-1 and Leo makes a save. I think it's blocked off the line, but, yeah, still ends up in, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, I think looking at the fixtures we have left, there's probably one winnable game you look at on paper and say that's a must win that is a three points and that would be Sheffield Wednesday at home I think every other game is uh, up in the air really uh, I could not look at any of those other games and be confident in City say right now yeah we'll win that even with Sheffield Wednesday you know I'm, I'm not remotely confident that we'll win that to be honest but you look at it and think it's a must win um, you know, it could even be a six pointer. Um, but yeah, we just need to obviously try and scrap for as many points as we can from now till that Sheffield Wednesday game, what'll be huge. Um, you know, next up, Ipswich at home. If you if we can get a point from that, you know, we'd we'd obviously be over the moon with that. Um it's just a shame that we're playing so many of the teams around us. And we've already wasted so many of the games with the teams around us under JDT uh, when it just wasn't working. You know, you think back to Huddersfield, Rotherham and QPR at home, two points from those games is abysmal. Um, and now Millwall and Plymouth at home, two points from those two games, not good enough. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to have to hope that we're start picking up a point here and there against some of these teams where we we 
no, you know, a neutral would not give us any chance. Um, but we have definitely started to defend better under Eustace for job doll. But that has been at cost of um, the goals, it seems. But, you know, obviously you, you need to be hard to beat before we, you can even start to think about winning games, really. So, yeah, just thankfully Smodix is uh, still plugging away um, where, we'd, where we would be without him. Dreads thinking about. Um, I'm sure we'd be below Rotherham to be honest. Um, and yeah, uh, we've obviously on the road now, Middlesbrough, and then I think it's Ipswich at home after that Good Friday. So, you know, it's uh, if we can get a point at Middlesbrough, that'd be really positive. A point at home to Ipswich would be really positive. Just have to start hoping that these points are enough and hope that we can pick up a win miraculously somewhere and get Eustace's his, his first official win. Um because yeah it's it's desperately needed. We can't just keep drawing. Two two defeats in his nine games is nice. Um he has definitely stopped that, but it has been at the trade of any sort of wins which weren't coming under John Dahl anymore to be fair. Um so I, I it's it's better than what it was, but it's it's still worrying, and you have to question whether it will be enough to to stay in this league. But thankfully, there are about ten teams that realistically could go down this season. Um, so yeah, time will tell. But on to Middlesbrough. Um, should be an interesting game, and uh, we we do have we do have a good record against Middlesbrough. So to go there and get a win would be major. So let's let's hope for that. Cheers for watching, guys, and yeah, hopefully the next vlog I do, there can be a bit more action for you to watch than uh, the seven clips I've, I've, I've got today. <laughs>